So let's uh, begin the class. So the last time we were talking about what can go wrong with the idea that using, using stock price as the objective. So we saw that the following things can go wrong. Stockholders don't have enough control over the managers. We can have some social costs, which is not traced back to the firm. We can have bad, new, bad or delayed news for the financial markets. And the bondholders can get kind of cheated. So, here we can see the list here again. So, possible solutions. How can we solve this? The first one try to have a different way of corporate governance. The second one, find a different objective for the company instead of stock price. The next one, continue to use maximizing stock price or value of the company as the objective, but reduce the conflict by making managers into stockholders, for example, protecting the bondholders more, making sure we provide the information honestly and minimizing the social cost. So let's have a look at each of these. So we were looking at the Anglo-Saxon corporate governance. Do you understand Anglo-Saxon? When we're talking about Anglo-Saxon, what countries are we talking about? Hmm? US? Great Britain. Great Britain. Where else? Do you know the countries which used to be in the British Empire? Hmm? India? Australia? Mostly the English speaking countries, right? Canada? Ireland and so on, right? The US also used to be in the British Empire. So, that's the Anglo-Saxon system, but also for law it's similar. Legal system is common law in the English, former English empire, but civil law in Germany, right, or other parts of Europe. So Germany has a little bit different system on corporate governance too, and Japan. So they are based on corporate cross-holding. What do you think cross-holding means? What does cross-holding mean? What does cross mean? Cross, right? Like that, you think, right? And what does holding mean? We're talking about holding stocks here, right? Owning stocks. So, in Germany, <coughs> the bank can own the stock in the company, right? The company can own the stock in the bank. So, we have a diff across different companies, they, all, they can own stock in each other. So, let's say that just I'm BMW. So, here we have BMW, here we have the supplier, do you understand supplier? No. And here we have the bank, the bank is lending money to the supplier and BMW. So BMW own part of the bank, they own stock in the bank, right? The bank owns stock in BMW and in the supplier, okay? So they all own stock in each other. BMW owns stock in the supplier. The supplier owns stock in BMW. This is like cross-holding. Okay? So it means that BMW wants their supplier to do well because they own stock in their supplier. The supplier wants BMW to do well because they own stock in BMW. Okay? The bank already lent them money, they want them to do well, right? These guys own stock in the bank, so they want the bank to do well too. So 
So the German and Japanese system is a little bit more like this. So the advantage is the stronger firms work at improving the weaker firms. So BMW finds some new system, like production system. So they are going to teach their supplier the production system. Why? They want their supplier to do a better job. Why? They don't stop there. Also, they'll teach the bank. They don't stop in the bank. So we can help each other. Okay? Companies help each other and trade the knowledge and so on. But what is the disadvantage of this cost-holding system? The weaker and poorly run firms pull down the stronger firms. So let's say that BMW has a problem. It's, it's not selling cars anymore, right? Germany, uh, German cars are not popular anymore. Then what happens is the bank stock price goes down and the supplier stock price goes down, okay? So if one person is weak, they can pull down the other people. That's the problem with this kind of system, okay? But because we own stock here, we can go to the meeting, the annual general meeting. If we own enough stock, we may be able to decide who is one person on the board of directors. So we can kind of keep an eye on the other companies. So this is a different way of corporate governance. So uh, in China, they have government-owned companies with a centralized power structure. So China is a one-party system, so they have very centralized power. If you own stocks in ICBC, it's a Chinese bank, for example, Goldman Sachs, a US bank, <coughs> own some stocks in the Chinese banks. But the way that the bank is controlled in China is by the government. So you can buy stocks in the Chinese bank, but you don't have any control of the bank. You're, you don't have voting shares, you're, you're a foreigner, right? So you can't vote at the AGM. So the government is controlling the bank, even though they sell stocks. The government is the biggest stockholder. Probably the government owns 60 or 70% of the stock in the Chinese banks, right? So the government is going to uh, do the governance of the bank. So when you have that kind of system, if you have a good government, it's okay, right? So it depends on how good the top people are. So, we could change to the Japanese or German governance system. That's one option of solving these, this problem, right? The next option is choosing a different objection function. So firms can make, try to look at a different objective. Instead of maximizing the stock price, we could say, let's maximize the size of the firm or maximize the market share. <laughs> so, for example, we have, do you understand market share? Market share. We have, let's say we have two companies. In Korea we have Kia, and let's say there's only two car companies. So Kia and BMW. So in an imaginary world there's just two car companies. Kia owns 60% of the market. BMW owns 40% of the market. So that market share means BMW is selling 40% of the cars in Korea. Kia is selling 60% of the cars in Korea, okay, or the value. So sometimes we could say, I want to be, get more of the market share. What's one quick way to get more market share? What's a quick way to get more market share? <coughs> Reduce the price. Reduce the price. Okay, if I reduce the price, I can quickly get more market share. Is that the same as maximizing my stock price? No, it's a different objective, right? If I reduce the price a lot, my profits can go down, my stock price can go down, right? But we could just use a different objective. We could have other problems with this. Okay, anyway, they should be linked to the long term health and value of a company. Especially when a company joins enters the market for the first time, they think about market share. So some companies, they don't worry about making a profit for the first three or four years. They want to build up their market share when they enter a new market. So they might reduce the price. Then when they get some customers and loyal customers, then they start to increase the price. So 
So uh, we could, the other option was maximize the stock price, but reduce the conflict. So we try, we look at each of these, but we keep maximizing the stock price as our objective, but we try to reduce the, or eliminate each problem individually. So the first problem, managers are taking advantage of stockholders. One way to solve this is we have more active market for corporate control. So for example, pension funds or individuals are trying to, to control companies more these days. Stockholders taking advantage of bondholders. So these days bondholders are trying to protect themselves with contracts. Okay? Bondholder will make a contract saying your debt to equity ratio can't be too high. Okay? You can't take on too much debt in order to have too much risk. Do you understand contract? Yeah, right? So the bondholder will make more contracts. What about the problem of this kind of incorrect or delayed information to the markets? Well, the markets can punish the company. Try, try to punish the company more if the company does a bad thing, right? We saw in the case of Greece that Greece gave some misleading information to the markets. They said that they had more money than they did, did, right? They were hiding some money that they didn't have. So when Greece announced this to the markets, some bond traders, people who were buying the bonds of Greece government, they decided they want to punish Greece, right? So they stopped buying the bonds and Greece's interest rate went up very high. Greece had to call the IMF, right? So some of the bondholders were interviewed on the TV and they said, well, Greece was dishonest about their accounting, right? So now they need to be punished. So I'm not going to buy their bonds, okay? He works for an investment company and he's not going to buy their bonds. So if companies give this kind of bad information, the markets could try to be more punitive. <clears throat> and firms creating social costs has led to more regulations. So government is making more laws about the environment and so on. And the customers are not happy. Customer backlash means if you damage the environment or do something wrong, like do some human rights violation, then people will stop buying your product. So first of all, the stockholders. So an uh, activist institutional investor like CalPERS Pension Fund from California, they are more active in monitoring companies. Okay? It means they are now taking more interest in the companies. And they want to change the way business is done. For example, nowadays we have socially responsible investing. And we have principles of responsible investing. Do you understand principles? What is a principle? Is a principle a law? A rule? Right, we have laws, we have rules, we have principles. Which is strongest? Law, which is weakest? Principle, right? So for example, if you're doing an English camp, you might make a pledge at the start of the camp. I won't speak English during the camp. Right? Just you sign the paper. That's like principle. Okay? If you speak English, you're not going to be thrown out of the camp. Just you decide yourself to make this pledge. So the UN, you know the UN, they have made this thing called principles of responsible investing. Number one, I will think about social environmental factors before I invest in a company. Okay? Then you sign. So nowadays, a lot of investors have signed that kind of document. They're getting more interested in that kind of thing, right? It means that before they invest in a company, they're going to check about the company's governance and uh, environmental uh, things and social things, okay? So <coughs> it means that uh, these kind of investors are becoming more active in checking the company. So next, uh, we have individuals, a guy called Carl Icahn, or individual companies, they, they're like vigilantes, like Batman, do you know Batman? <coughs> Batman for finance, right? 
they think the company is doing something bad. So they, they go in and buy a lot of stock and then they will fire the managers, right? Make the, the company change. Okay, uh, <coughs> stockholders are starting to get a little bit more uh, vocal in the meetings or changing the board of directors. Boards are getting better than in the past. They're becoming more independent. So the boards are becoming smaller. Uh, so it's between 9 and 11 these days. There are fewer insiders on the board. Okay, It was uh, about six insiders in the 70s. But nowadays only one or two directors are insiders. Means connected to the company or working for the company. Directors are getting paid with stock instead of cash. So it means that directors have more interest now in the company. So that's another way we can do is pay our directors with stock. So the directors are more, if the directors don't own any stock in the company, it would be a bad sign, right? Or if the directors are selling all their stock, it could be a bad sign of the company. So uh, <coughs> nowadays we're using more nominating committees instead of CEOs to decide who is on the board of directors. So it's improving. So, uh, what about legislation, laws to make sure that the company is uh, acting properly? So, when we had the scandal of Enron, do you know Enron? Enron was a big US electric company which went bankrupt, right? It was like the eighth biggest uh, company in the world, so it was big news when it went bankrupt because of false accounting. It was bad government, since, right? Uh, the managers still got paid the big bonuses. So after this they took in some legislation. Similar to the financial crisis. After the financial crisis they brought in some legislation. Dodd-Frank reform. Usually legislation in the US is called after the people who propose the legislation. This is a name and a name. Right? Then, <laughs> one problem is that there is a cost of making the legislation. Regulating has a high cost. We have to check, right? And we can't check people all the time. So at some stage, we need to have uh, companies themselves taking responsibility. Okay? It's like in the English camp. You say you don't want to speak English, but I'm not going to be watching you. We can't have one teacher for one student watching them 24 hours a day. So it's a little bit similar for companies, right? We can make the law about for the companies, but that only goes so far. And we need the companies to have their own uh, system as well. <coughs> so, do you think that companies who have better corporate governance make more profit? <coughs> or it doesn't matter? So my company has better corporate governance than your one. Do, uh, does my company do better? So we've had a lot of studies on this. Okay? So, for example, buy stocks that have strong investor protections while selling stocks with the weak protections. So in this case, they could make a bigger profit. Excess return means more than the average. They made more than the average by 8.5%. Uh, so they took 1,500 firms and they bought stocks in the firms with the good investor protection, the good corporate governance, and they sold stocks in the companies with the weak corporate governance, right? So they found that they made some extra return. So they also found that if you have less investor protection, your market value can go down. So for companies that scored high investor protections, had higher profits, sales growth, and made less acquisitions. So we should have a good corporate government system, right? It's going to be better for the company too for the profit. What about the bondholders? So, these days they're making more restrictive agreements 
Restrictive means stopping or blocking, restricting. On investment, financing and dividend policy. So the bondholders are trying to restrict paying dividends, right? Restrict taking risky investments. So this is in, introduced in the agreements with the banks, private lending agreement, and into bond issues. So when we buy the bond, we make some restriction on the company. So usually the bondholder, the difference between the bondholder and the stockholder, main difference is the stockholder is the owner controlling the company, right? The bondholder is just lending money. But we can see that these days the bondholders are trying, even though they don't own or they don't control the company, they want to bring in something to restrict, restrict the risky action against things like sudden increases in leverage, okay. other things which increase risk. So here we, we have this type of bond which people are buying. So the financial markets, uh, these days we, met, we already discussed, the punishment is quicker and stronger if the firms do something wrong. <coughs> So what about in society? So government makes laws and regulations. So you pollute the river, or you're making a lot of CO2, the government is going to make a carbon tax. Carbon tax, right? That kind of law. <clears throat> so we can lose our business if we're, cap if we're working with socially conscious clientele. So, your generation is more socially conscious than the last generation, right? Do you understand socially conscious? Are you socially conscious? Hmm? So, we can see some companies these days, like the Body Shop, which is trying to be more socially conscious. They don't use any animals for testing, okay? They, do, they make some organic products, that kind of thing, right? Or uh, companies are doing some good for the environment, Right? We have also some products like fair trade. Do you know fair trade products? Fair trade products means that the people in the poorer countries are getting paid a fair wage and their rights are not being violated. Okay? So people are choosing to shop with socially responsible companies. And we mentioned socially responsible investing. Socially responsible investing is growing all the time. SRI constantly growing. So more and more people are investing in companies which are socially responsible. <coughs> so these we can see summed up the counter reaction. So we can take stock price as the objective if we uh, do these things, right? Stockholders have more control over the managers. They can put them on notice or fire them if they're doing a bad job. Investors are more activists in our company. We encourage our investors to be more activists in the company. Uh, we have more laws. Investors, our customers, are more worried about the company's social actions. Uh, here, the financial markets, the investors become more skeptical and punish more quickly. And the bondholders can protect themselves. So if we can do those kind of things, then it may be that we can use the stock price. Okay? So now discuss this question with your partner. So what can managers do to make less this problem of conflict with stockholders, society, bondholders and financial markets? Okay? So we just discussed, we had the problem that there is some conflict between uh, these guys and the company or the managers. Right? So what can we do to solve this? Discuss with your partner. I'm going to show you how to do it.
to the first one. So they have to consider to be a good citizen, right? But what's happening if they don't, if they are not good citizens? What's going to happen? Make more rules, law, laws. Right, government is making more laws. Anything else? Investors customer backlash. So investors won't invest, buy your stocks, or investors won't buy your product. Customers won't buy your product if you're doing badly, right? Yeah. Then uh, bondholders, uh, Go So Young. Where is Go So Young? Yes. Can you answer the question? You just arrived in the class. Gu Young Hun. Yes. What about bondholders? Having hmm? bonds. Yes, the bondholders buy bonds, but how can they protect themselves? How are they protecting themselves these days? Okay, so uh, Kim Mi Jin, where is Kim Mi Jin? 
Where is Kim Mee Jin? <laughs> no. I'm oh, not here. Kim Bo Ran? Yes. What do you think? How can bondholders protect themselves? So look back at the slide. Do you have the slides in front of you? Do you have the page? Look back at the page about the bondholders. You should have already done this with your partner. So let's take another two minutes to look at the answer of the question again, okay? So we just studied about this. If you have the pages, you can go back and read again, okay? So go back, let's take another couple of minutes, try to read the answers again, okay? Find a slide which says bondholders, read about the bondholders, okay? So the question is, what can managers do to make less the problems of conflict with the bondholders, right? So go back to the slide of the bondholders. Okay, here we have bondholders. The bondholders' defense against stockholder excess. Okay, read the slide again. And the last one is about financial markets. Okay, so go back again and check the slide about the financial markets. This is the slide about the financial markets. Okay? So discuss with your partner. Pretend that your partner is me. I'm asking you the question. Okay? So tell the answer to your partner. First, then later I'll ask you, then you should be prepared to answer the question. Okay? This is the, when we're asking a question in class, we're doing this kind of discussion. Thinking back or looking back at the slides, maybe you don't know the answer exactly. That's why we're having the question, to review, okay? So look back at the slides, check the answer, and tell the answer to your partner first, okay? So let's take two minutes to do that.
Question about bondholders? <coughs> so, what can bondholders do to protect themselves? Bonds, yes. Yes. So create a new type of bond. What type of bond? Yes. Portable bond. Right. What do these bonds do? Okay. So key word is restrict. Restrict. So they restrict the restrict the company or the managers from taking too much risk. Okay? Do you understand restrict? Restrict is lim limit or stop stop them from taking too much risk. Okay, what about financial markets? Uh, Kim Jin Su. <clears throat> So, uh, Kim Tae Su. Yes. What can financial markets do if the company is being dishonest or misleading? Markets, what can they do? What can financial markets do if the firm is doing some bad behavior? Sell the shares, right? So they're punishing, punishing the company. So selling the shares is like punishing the company. <coughs> like with Greece, the bondholders, they sold all the bonds to punish the company. <coughs> so if we have these kind of limits, the financial markets punish the company well. We have agreements with the bondholders, which can restrict the company from taking too much risk. The government makes laws well or 
customers are more socially responsible and also investors. And <coughs> if we can uh, control the managers better, then it's possible to use the stock price as the objective function. Okay? But if we can't do those things, uh, it may not work as well. So, discuss this question with your partner. So what do you think should be the function for decision making in a business? So this means, what do you think, if you're the manager, financial manager in the business, what should your goal be? What should your objective be? Do you understand objective? Objective, what you want to achieve. So choose one from the list. Discuss with your partner. What is your objective going to be? explaining in this class, right? What should be the objective function, right? We just described recently what should be the objective function. So what were we talking about as the objective function? Were we talking about stock price, profits, market share, revenues? What were we discussing from the start? From these, stock price, profits, earnings, market share, revenues, social good. Which one were we discussing? We mentioned market share once during the class, but we mentioned something else a lot more. We did say it's market share, but we just said that very briefly as an alternative. But what were we talking about most of the time? Stock price, right? We were talking about stock price. So which one do you think? This maximize stock price with no constraints or maximize stock price, reducing conflict? Reducing conflict, right? So we just talked about in the last number of slides how we can try to reduce the problem, right? Reduce the conflict but maximize the stock price. So the stock price is easily measurable. We can see the stock price going up and going down. And we said that it's not sure that investors are just short term. Investors could also be thinking in the long term. Okay? So if we make a good long term decision, that can also be reflected in our stock price. Okay? The stock price will go up or down depending on the firm's long term decision too. 
So we can use stock price, but we saw the problems with using stock price. Okay? And then we said we can try to reduce the problems. So from the point of view of the financial manager, they're going to be looking at uh, maximizing the stock price and reducing the conflict. Okay? Especially for finance, the stock price is easy to measure and we just have to be careful about uh, conflict with society, that we don't harm society, that we don't take advantage of our bondholders, okay? that we don't uh, take advantage of the owners of the company, and that we don't uh, have any other, try to reduce the other kind of problems. Uh, an alternative to this is uh, stakeholder management. It's more overall view, objective for the firm, is keeping everybody happy, right? Uh, but just in the finance department, they're more focused on this area, okay? So, uh, let's finish there for today. If you have any questions, you can ask me on the uh, website. So you can go to the website, okay? So then, I'll see you on the next class.